Hello and welcome to another video. Uh, in this one I'm going to be explaining Python's zip applications as well as some other you know, similar technologies along the same vein. Uh, I was scrolling through Twitter and saw a post where someone was like, mind blown, there's this really cool thing where you can zip up Python files and they run like Java jars and um, it's actually a pretty cool tech and it's been around for a really really long time. Uh, I've used it in a couple places uh, mostly to bootstrap virtual environments, but uh, let's let's jump into it and I'll show you how it works and how you can kind of extend it. All right, so here was basically the demo that they had on Twitter. They basically made a main.py file, which like, I don't know, what do we want to do here? If name equals main, just we'll just do like hello world, sure. Uh, print hello world, something like that. So you have a, a main.py file and then you make a zip file with it, which I believe, I believe this is how you do that. Uh, adding main.py deflated 12%. Yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, and then you can run this zip file and it runs as if it's a Python script, which is kind of cool. Uh, it even works in Python 2, and I believe it works all the way back to um, Python 2.6, if I call, if I recall correctly. Uh, could be wrong there. <laughs> I don't exactly remember, but it was a long time ago. It's been around, I mean, at least since I've been writing Python. Um, but it wasn't advertised all that much, and like it was kind of one of those features that people don't really know about. And uh, if you if you come from like a Java background, you know executing a zip should be super familiar because that's how Java jars work. You just compile a bunch of class files and throw them into a uh, zip with a manifest, and that's how you get a jar. Uh, and you can actually stitch together a jar by hand if you're so inclined. I don't know why you would. You would probably just use Maven or whatever build tool that you would want to use. Um, but they actually made this a lot easier in Python 3.5 to build these zip apps uh, using the zip app module. Uh, it basically just makes it a lot easier to uh, take a chunk of code and build an entry point to it. And basically, there's there's a um, there's a command line that helps you build this zip automatically. You obviously don't need that because you can just use the zip utility directly, but there's this uh, command line for you. And actually, uh, in the virtual env project, I contributed a zip app at one point in time. It has gone through a bunch of different iterations, especially now that virtual env has uh, dependencies. But let's see, there is there is a new uh, make zip app. It's a little bit more complicated now because it has to uh, include some dependencies, but no, it still works basically the same. You know, copy all the files from virtual env and make a make a you know zip that you can run. Uh, and if I recall correctly, you can curl git dot dot io slash virtual env dot pyz. Oh, <laughs> what is the URL? Oh no, and I I close Chrome too. Uh, virtual env pyz. Bootstrap.pypa.io. Bootstrap. Oh, you're not going to be able to see it on that monitor. Bootstrap.pypa.io slash virtualenv.pyz. Uh, right, I need to. <laughs> I spelled for vor virtualenv. It's fine, it still works though. Uh, and then if we use Python 3, this, um, vmf, you can initialize a virtual env without having to pip install a virtual env, which is pretty cool. Um, right, what else did I want to show? Oh, um, if we take this zip file, this one that we built before, out.zip, and we chmod plus exit, let's make it executable, we can't exactly run it, uh, we get an exec format error, but we can fix this by doing echo Zipin and Python 3 out 2.zip. I still think this works. Man, I hope this works. <laughs> I seem to remember it working. So 
This is a zip file. If we look at it, uh, actually, I don't know if file's gonna know what's up here. Python 3 script executable binary data. Um, anyway, the, the first line of this is a shebang, but the rest of it is a zip file. And I believe if we run this, yeah, so <laughs> Python knows how to unzip this even though, um, even though it has not zip data at the front of it. And the kind of cool thing is that uh, you can distribute just an executable and you don't need to run it with Python, uh, which is what we had to do up here. Um, so that's kind of neat. Uh, what else is there to show? Oh, um, interesting, there's actually some other files in Python that you probably deal with pretty often, uh, but don't realize that they are zips. And one of them is a wheel. Pip download. This package probably works. Um, so this file here, this AST pretty 2.0 py2 py3 none any dot will, uh, this is actually a zip file. If we make a directory and unzip it, uh, star dot wheel, you'll notice that it has essentially like packaging metadata, but also just the Python code inside of it. And if you're paying attention earlier, we can run Python code if it's inside of a wheel, uh, but you have to do something a little bit different here. So just to show that there's no tricks, we're gonna delete that directory. And if you Python path uh, the wheel and then run an interpreter, you can actually import any of the code that's in there. So uh, there's AST pretty, and then we can show that it works. AST.parse print hello. Uh, so you can see that I'm able to execute the code that's inside that wheel. And if I guess to show that it actually works, uh, ASD pretty is not importable without that special Python path thing. And you can actually use Python dash M. Uh, so if we wanted to look at the AST of main.py, which was the file that we built before, we can call with Python path, Python three dash M AST pretty. So this runs the, runs this module. Um, and also eggs were also zips, but <laughs> eggs are hopefully dead now, so I don't have to explain them. But uh, yeah, so there's there's a lot of things in Python that are, you know, zips, and Python natively supports executing them. So I don't think there's anything else I wanted to show, so hopefully this was educational, and you know, it's kind of a, a short little video explaining that. But thank you for watching. If you guys have additional stuff that you want to see, leave it in the comments, or uh, hit up my Twitch or, you know, DM me on Twitter, whatever you want to do. Uh, happy to explain stuff to you guys. But thank you for watching and have a good one. Oh, actually, there's a couple other little things that I wanted to talk about that I totally forgot. Um, so there are a couple limitations of zip apps. Uh, one of them is that you can't natively put binary modules in there. So things like, uh, you know, C extensions or uh, similar modules, those out of the box don't work with zip app, uh, mostly because the, well, as far as I understand, the like CDLL stuff needs it to be a file. And when it's inside of a zip, it's not properly a file. So you can't hook, hook together the, the modules in that way, but you can always work around it and like extract the, the module to a place on disk and then import it that way. Um, <clears throat> but given that's kind of a pain in the butt and those modules still aren't like, uh, cross operating system or cross Linux, Linux distribution compatible, there are some tools that make this a little bit easier. Um, I haven't really worked too much with them. Uh, the three that I remember off the top of my head are, um, PEX, which is by the Pants Project. There's Shiv. Um, I don't know who made that but I've, I've heard good things about it. And there's XAR or ZAR, or I don't know how it's pronounced, but it was originally a Facebook project. Uh, but those are a couple of, of things that, you know, sort of make this zip app distribution thing work. Um, but yeah, <laughs> hopefully you guys didn't click away before. Oh man, I'm gonna have to edit this. It's gonna be a pain. Anyway, re real end of the video now. Have a good one. <laughs>